Sometimes you stumble upon a book or a quote or a statement, and it really does change the direction of your life going forward. Now this video, I thought I would share three power questions that have really reframed my own life and have really truly changed the way I've lived going forward. What's up you guys, Alex Hine here. Now before we jump in, first link below this video is for a free goal setting worksheet. If you wanna plan out how to have the best year ever of your dream life, download that free worksheet and go fill it out because it's gonna help you figure out exactly how to get what you want and figure out your daily rituals to make that happen. So the first question that prompted me to change the way I live my life started with this quote from Goethe, and it goes like this. Man sees in the world what he holds in his heart. Man sees in the world what he holds in his heart. And one story that prompted this was I was flying, coming back from Europe at some point, maybe five or 10 years ago. And I was staying in Switzerland at the time. I was flying back and I was going back to school in Clemson, South Carolina. And the man sitting next to me was about my own age, a young guy. And he said he was from Iraq. And he told me, he's like, hey, where are you from? Where are you going? And I said, hey, I'm, I'm living here. I'm going to school. I was like, where are you from? He said, I'm from Iraq. And I was like, oh, cool. I've always wanted to go there. I heard that whole area is really, really beautiful. Now, this is during the Iraq War. So this guy kind of gave me a weird look like, really? Like, you don't hate me? You know, it was that kind of look. Like, we're literally at war. I mean, technically, we were destroying their country. But basically, he gave me this shocked look like, you're not scared of me? You don't hate me? And I said, no, no, I've had tons of friends travel in Iraq and Iran recently. And they just specifically commented how beautiful, specifically Persia was. But that whole area of the world is so ancient. And he said, that's weird that you said that because almost no one responds that way. And what was very synchronistic in a weird way was that not even a week later, I had a friend who had served in the Iraq war in Clemson, South Carolina, you know, deep south, saying how much he hated the Iraqi people, how all the racial slurs he had for them, how much he hates that hellhole sand pit of a country, etc., etc. And then a week later, I had a friend literally traveling in Iraq and Iran during the Iraq war, telling me it is one of the most beautiful cultures with the most hospitable people, with such an ancient history that he's never seen anywhere else. And I just thought this is a lesson in life right here for sure. That man sees in the world what he holds in his heart. And so question number one is, what limiting beliefs about the world or my life are shaping my life? Question number two is all about, how would you live your life if you went after what you actually wanted? You know, we have all these politically correct things. I think people need to stop this PCBS. People need to start politely saying what they really think, having hard conversations, and going after the goals you really want. Like if for you, making a million dollars is a real goal, then say that's a real goal and really work towards it seriously. If getting a six pack or getting the most toned lean body you've ever gotten is what you really want, don't give a BSPC answer, oh, I wanna get fitter. If what you really just want is to look sexy, then just admit that to yourself and admit that to other people. Cut the BS because it just makes you uncomfortable with going after your own goals. You know, I saw this, <laughs> this interview with a woman on impact theory. And she was saying, you know, the thing that I really think people need is to be brutally honest about what they want in a significant other. If you need that person to be super smart, PhD level, highly intelligent, then maybe you need to be honest with yourself that that's what you need to date and don't settle for less than that. If what you really need is a super intense love, then be real and don't settle for anything less than that. If what you really need is huge boobs, and a nice butt, don't BS. Don't give a PC answer, I want her to look cute. If you really need a girl with huge boobs, then let's be real and be real with yourself, right? And in the same way, if you tell your significant other, oh, it's okay, honey, if you gain 50 pounds, of course I'll still wanna have sex with you. If that's not true, cut the PC BS, and instead, why don't you actually say, you know what, that probably would be hard for me. And then that becomes a form of accountability for you and your significant other. I think so much of our desires in modern society have been carved out of us. And when you look at people at the end of their life, what do they regret? Not going after the things they actually wanted. What you actually want can be small. I just want to earn a full-time living doing work I care about. 
or it can be massive. It can be something else. If that's what you want, then go after what you actually want and don't settle for anything less than what you actually want because it probably is actually attainable. That's the funniest part of all of this. Third question here or third statement. Earl Nightingale, famous personal growth author said, today is the future you dreamed of five years ago. Is it everything that you wanted? What made me think about this was that now living in LA, it's a land of creatives. And it's, it's also a land of wannabe creatives, all these people talking about their ideas and the things they want to do. And a lot like real life, most people aren't really doing anything. And I was speaking with a creative recently. And what he was telling me was that he always wanted to write a book. And in fact, I've heard this from hundreds of creatives in LA, right? So this is a composite of a lot of conversations. And he was telling me about all the plans he had to do and all the cool ideas and the great marketing and how he's going to be a bestseller because he's a good writer. And so I asked him, great, how many pages have you written? And he said, oh no, it's just in the, the manuscript proposal phase. So I said, how many pages have you written of the manuscript proposal? And he's, he's like, well, I'm still working on it. You know, I'm working on the idea and I'm working on the concept. Now, <laughs> not to throw this rando under the bus because I've had this conversation probably 30 times in LA, but Five years ago, I also wanted to write a book. And I don't want this to be the, the braggadocio show, but I'm glad that by 30, I had already written two full-length books because I wisely knew my own nature and also human nature that five years from now, I could either have a book, doesn't have to be a New York Times bestseller, doesn't have to sell a million copies. It just has to be something I created and I shipped. And guess what? Now at 34, there are five of my books on Amazon. And the difference is that I acted. Not that I'm more special, more smart, more connected, have more money. The only difference was that I actually did it. And I see that sometimes the difference in life is just the people who actually do it have the spoils go to them. That's it. Not that they're special or not that they're super intelligent. But while everyone else was talking, they were just in the gym. While everyone else was talking, they were writing the book in the cafe. While everyone else talked, they were doing the work. And sometimes that's the only difference it makes. So the third power question is, what dreams did I think I would have achieved by now five years ago? And what do I have to do to make sure that does not happen again? Now, I want to leave you with the story by Earl Nightingale, where he said that during the Great Depression, he passed a group of out-of-work steel workers. And they were commenting about the economy and how hard it was to find a job and they couldn't make enough money. And he was thinking in his head, you know, what have you been doing in your free time the last 20 years in this craft? Literally in your free time of an hour a day, you could have become an open heart surgeon in the free time you had in the last 10 or 20 years. And his point was that it just takes an hour a day to change your life or to learn a new skill or to upgrade in some way. You don't have to change everything. Just a segment of your afternoon or a segment of your evening or a segment of your weekend can be all it takes to dramatically change your life. And that's why I'm so adamant about learning new skills and blocking this time to do that. Now, one of the companies that's helped me the most do this in my own life is Skillshare. And I wanna share an awesome deal that they have for you guys because it's one of the best ways to fill that one hour a day with skill improvement. Check out all of the online learning communities and programs that Skillshare has with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics like illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. So Skillshare has classes to fit your schedule and your skill level. Members get unlimited access to thousands of these different kinds of classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions of people. Now the classes are usually under an hour and they have short lessons to help you fit any schedule. But I would definitely go ahead and check out some of the topics that you might like. Like for example, there are courses on journaling and design. There are courses on the fundamentals of DIY photography or even cinematography and low budget filmmaking. You can even learn how to make your creative side gig your full-time job. And for a lot of these online ways to learn, you can have access to all of these in a limited amount. The first 1,000 people to use this link We'll get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Now, before you guys go, check out that special package, the special deal that Skillshare has offered Modern Health Monk viewers right below this video. And then check out these other related videos for you right over here.